God help me. Merry Christmas and etc. Grab some of that eggnog and sit down, cause today we're gonna be talking about the best Batman movie, Batman Returns, with minor spoilers. Now when I say that, I'm of course being completely subjective. There's plenty of arguments to be made that The Dark Knight is the best one due to its societal critiques and understanding of Batman as a character, but to me, Batman Returns is the one that strikes a chord. But why? Well, the main thing that Batman Returns is getting at is the repulsion society has for outcasts and how this can form a karmic retribution later down the line. Think about it, the main three characters all have been wronged by society, Batman losing his parents to crime, Penguin being tossed away due to neglect, and Catwoman being killed due to corruption. All facets of a city too blind to do anything about it. I mean, their main source of protection is a cosplayer with a lot of gadgets, they don't exactly have a handle on things. What makes this statement about outcasts interesting though is the sheer diversity Burton brings to the table by having all three main characters react in different ways. Batman's reaction is to try to fix the rampant crime in the city, maybe as a way for the police to eventually support themselves. However, he's so dedicated to the role that he starts to lose his sense of identity, consciously or not. What a say. Split. Right up the center. Catwoman's reaction to the sexism and burdens of being a woman in an oppressive pre-feminist society is to become the exact opposite of what's expected of her, and go after the one person she demonizes as the source of her problems. Of course, even when she does succeed in killing Shrek, it doesn't fix anything for her, because once again Gotham is the one creating what ruined her. Look at how the random citizens of Gotham are portrayed, they're all a bunch of idiots waiting to be told what to think and feel by the media. The reason Tim set the film around Christmas is to critique this facet of society that buys into commercialization, desensitization, fat a and thought. How we glorify things bright and beautiful while ignoring or ridiculing anything ugly or abnormal. This feeds into the Penguin, who I feel like the Joker from the first movie is an inevitable force that was going to be created sooner or later. It's easy to just blame his parents for locking him in a cage and abandoning him, but I bet you anything that their parents and peers would do the exact same thing. It's a perpetual cycle of ruination that he desperately tries to break and fails. If that's not bleak, I'm not sure what is. And my gosh, is the sheer aesthetic of this film amazing? This is Burton's gothic sensibilities completely unhinge, allowing him to create these amazing locations and costumes. This of course gets tied into the music, which is quite possibly the best score I've ever heard. It's hard to put into words, but it just has this amazing operaic feel to it that makes everything that's happening feel important and ultimately tragic. That's what this movie is, it's a tragedy of outcasts, which despite having a lot of cheese and fun moments, manages to tap into a really bleak, existential dread that I feel like a lot of films are trying to avoid. When I think of my favorite films, I think what I gravitate towards is the ones that are directors at their most unfiltered, movies that are able to resonate because they're willing to be real. A lot of people like to nitpick the problems with this film, but I just don't want to. I I think sometimes it's important to acknowledge that a film has flaws and just not care because you love it anyway. Maybe you don't like this film, that's fine, but I always will. Merry Christmas.